Hello everyone, in this video we will study about arrays and its fundamentals. Arrays is basically a simple data structure that can also be used to build complex or composite data structures like stacks and queues. In this video we will discuss about arrays and we will see what all different operation can be performed using arrays and how arrays are stored in computer's memory. So let's start with the definition of arrays. Arrays is a collection or systematic arrangement of objects of same data types. Data types can be integer, character, double, etc. Now let's say if we want to declare an integer array, then let's see how we will do that. We will first write the data type, then the variable name, and then the size of the array. So, this is the data type, which can be character, float, double, etc. This is the variable name, and this is the size of the array. Now let's see where the concept of array is useful in computer programming. So let's take a case where we have to store marks of 10 students in the class. And we have to find the average marks of all the students in the class. So if we use the integer variables, we can have 10 different integer variables m1 m2 m3 m4 and so on up till m10 where each variable corresponds to the marks of the student in the class and in order to find the average first we need to find the sum of marks which can be calculated using m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 and so on up till m10 then we can easily find the average using the formula sum divided the size that is 10 in our case because the class has 10 students now let's say instead of 10 students if we have 100 students in the class then you can easily said see that it will be very difficult to have 100 different variables so instead of that we can easily form an array of data type integer and size 100. We know the indexing of the array starts from 0. So M0 will represent the marks of first student in the class. M1 will represent the marks of second student in the class. M2 will represent the marks of third student in the class up till M99 which will represent the marks of 100 student in the class. Also, you can see that to find the sum using M0 plus M1 plus M2 up till M99 will also not be a good idea. So instead of that, we can easily run a for loop and let's see. So first we will have some array, which will be initialized to zero. Then we can run a for loop, which is starting from 0 and going till 99 and we can easily update sum as sum plus marks of ith student and the in order to find the average we can again use the same formula which is sum divided by total number of students in the class which is 100 you can clearly see that it will work even if the class has 1000 students or even more than that. So this is a clear example how arrays are very useful. We can also have arrays of different data types. So in this case we are declaring an array of integer data type but we can also have arrays of character, float and so on of different data types. And also this is an example of one dimensional array, but we can have arrays of two dimension, three dimension and so on. Now let us see how arrays are stored in computer's memory. 
सो कंप्यूटर मेमोरी इज डिवाइडेड इन टू सेगमेंट्स और पार्टीशन एंड कंप्यूटर मेमोरी कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ वेरी लार्ज एरे ऑफ बाइट्स सो ईच सेगमेंट इज रिप्रजेंटिंग वन बाइट ऑफ मेमरी एंड इन कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर ईच बाइट ऑफ मेमरी हैज एन एड्रेस सो वी कैन एज्यूम द बॉटम मोट मोस्ट एड्रेस इज जीरो then as we go up we have address 1 address 2 and so on so let's take address of this byte as 100 then this as 101 then this as 102 and so on in c and c++ we also have pointer variables that can store these address now let us take our array again so we have an array of the type integer and let's take the size 5 we know the size of integer is 4 bytes and the total number of elements in our array is 5 and every element is having 4 bytes so total size of the array becomes 20 bytes now when the program executes the computer will allocate 20 bytes to this array so you can assume that this 4 bytes will be given to a of 0 and computer will give continuous segments so basically array of 1 will definitely have these 4 bytes array of 2 will have above this and so on now since the memory allocation is continuous so ss and modification of the array element becomes very easy and the ss or modification of the array element takes order of one time that is order of one time complexity <coughs> now let us see how so basically arrays a is also known as the pointer to the first element of the array and a also represent the base address so let us see using a c program how we can see the value of address and the value stored at that particular address so let us go to a c program and let's declare the integer array of size 5 now if you will execute this statement print f percentage d is used for integers backslash n is used for next line and you will try to print a this will print the base address or the address of first element of the array and also if you will try to print the value at this address which will also be an integer you know in c we can print the values using x star so star a will print the value of first element of the array now we see that we have only declared the array we have not initialized the array so at this point of time this will print a garbage value or any random value so if we want to test it properly let's also initialize the array so array of 0 let's make it equal to 2 array of 1 let's make it equal to 4 
array of 2 let's make it equal to 5 array of 3 let's make it equal to 8 and array of 1 let's make it equal to 4 let's make it equal to 1 now if you will print this again the base address will be printed but the value will not be any random value instead this will print 2 which is the value of the first element of the array or the index 0 now if you will try to execute a statement like this that is the address of the next element that is a plus 1 this will give you the address of the next element that is second element now let's say if the value of base address is 100 this will return the value 104 why because this is a pointer to the first element of the array that is base address and this is known as an offset now offset increase the address of the base address by the size of the data type in our case we are using an integer variable integer has size 4 bytes so this will increase the address by 4 bytes so if the base was 100 in this case 104 will be printed now as we mentioned the ss is in order of 1 so let's say if we have to print the second value or the value of second element we can easily run this which will be an integer because we are having an integer array an x tick sign we know is used to print the value of particular address so this statement will print the value of the second element which we can clearly see is 4 in our case now ss is order of 1 because as we have seen when we want to try or we want to find any element in the array the address is calculated using base address plus the offset so let's take an example if we have to find the value of the third element of the array we can either write it like this that is the value basically of the fourth element which is the third index and it can also be seen like this that is base address plus the offset and the value at that offset now please note that the pointer arithmetics only applies in c and c plus plus because java do not support pointer variables but the internal working will be similar so this was the basics of arrays and how they are stored in memory. In coming videos we will study more about arrays. So I hope this video was helpful and thank you everyone.